Right, hello everyone. I'm going to stop sharing for a second and introduce everybody. Um, and then, oops, press the wrong button. Um, and then we'll get started. So my name's Claire Metcalf and I work for the Enrich Project and also something called the Step Support Programme. And joining me today is Charlie Gilderdale and Ems Lord. And Ems is going to be manning the uh, Q&A and helping out on the chat for us. So um, I'll go back to sharing the screen. And what we're going to look at today is something called uh, the trouble with quizzles. And we're going to start fairly slowly so that if people are still coming in, they can catch up. So um, first of all, I need to talk a little bit about quizzles. Those of you who are uh, observant will notice that what I've actually got here is a picture of guinea pigs. Now, the quizzle is a very shy creature, um, and we haven't been able to get any photographs of it yet, but we do have an artist's, artist's impression. So the quizzle is about the size of a guinea pig. Um, they reproduce sort of once every year. Um, they're, as I said, very shy, and they are herbivores. And what we want to do is we want to look what's going to happen to a population of quizzles as time goes on. So I'm going to start with a very, very simple model, and I'm going to introduce a little bit of notation. So an awful lot of mathematics is about notation, and I'm going to introduce two different variables here. Well, this one actually isn't a variable, this is a constant. So y0 is the number of quizzles we have at the start of when we're going to look at what's happening with the population. And yn is going to be the number of quizzles in year n, whatever that is. So we could start with y0 is a thousand. So we have a population of a thousand quizzles. And then after one year, we could have um, a thousand and fifty quizzles. And then after two years, we could have 997 quizzles. So it's just telling us how many quizzles we have after a certain amount of time. And I'm going to introduce a very, very simple model for what's going to happen with the number of quizzles. And I'm going to assume that if we have more quizzles, we'll have even more baby quizzles. And so the number of quizzles next year is going to be proportional to the number of quizzles I have now. So if I have more quizzles, I get more baby quizzles. If I have fewer quizzles, I have fewer baby quizzles. So my um, formula is going to be this. So Charlie, I'm going to ask you to do a bit of work now. Um, I'm going to start with a population, a starting population of a thousand quizzles. And here I've got this relationship which says y n plus one is equal to k times y n. So this is the population next year is k times the population this year. And I'm going to put in a value of k. So I'm going to say y n plus one is equal to two times y n. So if I've got a starting population with a thousand quizzles, can you tell me how many quizzles I'll get after one year? Okay, so I'm interpreting that to mean that the population this year gets doubled to give mm -hmm. me the population the following year. So y one would be two thousand. Yep. Y two would be four thousand. And then the following year would be 8,000. And let's hope um, these quizzles don't take up too much space because uh, the population's growing quite dramatically. It's going to be 16,000 and 32,000, 64,000, 128,000. Yeah, um, I mean, we, we know from what's happened in the last couple of years how dangerous doubling can be. So this does not seem sustainable. <clears throat> No, this, this looks like it might have some problems, but um, we'll just have a look at see what happens for a few different values of K. And this is going to be a chance for you watching to take part. So I'm going to start with Y0 is a thousand. I'm going to start with YN plus one equals KN. Well, I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to ask you in the chat, which I'm about to um, open up, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. So can you think if y0 is a thousand 
and yn plus one is k times yn. What's going to happen to my population of quizzles if I have k equals one? Now have a think about it and then just pop in the chat what you think happens if k equals one. Okay, so we've had some uh, contributions in the chat. Um, Charlie, does that agree with what you think happens? Yes, um, everyone seems to be agreeing that the population would stay constant, and that's because you multiply the population of every year by one to get the population of the following year. <clears throat> it's a nice equilibrium. Yeah. One of the things I forgot to say, and I've just remembered, if you have any questions about what we're doing at any point, or perhaps you missed something that I asked, there is a Q&A facility, so you can ask a question in Q&A. Okay, uh, next question I'm going to ask you lot is what happens to the number of quizzles if K is greater than one? So K is greater than one. We did one example, but we could have different examples. Okay, and I, I think we've got everybody saying that it's going to increase. Um, let's just do an example. So I've got a calculator here, which I hope that everybody can see. And I'm going to start with a thousand yeah. as my first uh, population. Um, Charlie, can you pick a K that's greater than one for me? 1.2. 1.2. So I'm going to take 1.2 and I'm going to multiply it by the previous answer. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to save myself some time. So I'd have to type this out each time. So if I do 1.2 times 1,000, I should get 1,200, which I do. If I do it again, I'll get 1440. And if I keep going it, doing it, um, I mean, we'll have to ignore the fact that we've got fractional quizzles, which isn't very um, uh, satisfactory. But you can see the number of quizzles is going up. And this is true that even if K is really, really close to one, so if I start with a thousand, and if I do one point naught naught one multiplied by answer, I'm going to do lots and lots and lots of these. It, it sort of starts off quite slowly, but it is still going up. It still increases. Okay, you can probably guess what my last question is going to be, but what happens if k is less than one? Okay, we've had quite a lot of people saying in the chat what they think happens. Okay, so what we basically have going on with this model <coughs> is we have one of three things can happen. Either the population stays the same, and k equals one. I don't know why I'm going into negative time. Or the population increases, and somebody said increases exponentially. Or the population decreases. And the, the rate at which this increases or decreases depends on K. But basically, we only get one of these three things that happen. So in, the last case, yeah. Claire, in the last case, presumably, they become extinct. Yes. Because so eventually, we'll get down to, yeah, we can't keep decreasing forever. <laughs> so I'll keep interrupting you. <laughs> um, so we, we have three options. Either the number of quizzles stays perfectly the same, or the quizzles go extinct, which we don't want, or the number of quizzles increases so the entire surface of the earth is covered in a sort of quizzle carpet. And that's not very um, likely either. So this model seems to not actually work very well. So we're going to think about a slightly different model. Now, it turns out for a different model, we're going to have a different notation. So instead of actually measuring the number of quizzles, we're going to look at the proportion of a theoretical maximum population we have. 
So it might be that we can look at uh, where they live and the amount of food that's available to them. And we might decide that they, we can support a maximum of 10,000 quizzles, say. That's quite small, but let's keep the number smallish. Okay, so we're going to, by know, using what we know about the quizzle and about what they eat, we can come up with the theoretical maximum possible number. So for example, we could have 10,000. So what that means is if we've got X3 equals 0.5, it means that in year three, the population of quizzles is half the maximum possible population. So if we have a maximum pop possible population of 10,000, in the chat, can you tell me what this means for the actual number of quizzles we have? But I'm just checking that people understand what the notation means. Okay, fantastic. Uh, should we ask one more question, Charlie, on this one to make sure we really understand it? Um, let's say that X10 is 0.7. What would that mean? Got several people saying 7,000, which I agree. There's actually a bit more information you can put in. It takes a bit longer to uh, write though. So 7,000 quizzles, yes, brilliant. 7,000 quizzles after 10 years. Okay, fantastic. So I think we are happy with the notation. So uh, this is the new model that we're going to use. So remembering that X is the proportion of the maximum population. So it's not the number. Um, X N at any point has to take a value between one and zero. So if xn equals zero, it means we have no quizzles. If xn equals one, we have the maximum possible number of quizzles. So we can't go above that. So we know that xn has to lie between these two numbers. We have a factor here, which is basically saying that the more quizzles we have, the more baby quizzles we have. So more quizzles is more baby quizzles next year. Charlie, can you interpret what this factor might be trying to represent? Um, okay, so that might um, be the influence of the environment on the population of quizzles. So, if xn is close to 1, 1 minus xn <clears throat> will have a dampening effect. It'll be close to 0. And that's presumably because when you get to cl close to your maximum pos possible population, <clears throat> you are struggling to, to feed everybody. You're struggling with resources. There may be lots of fighting going on. Uh, and um, uh, yes, uh, so, um, and you, uh, the predators might find it much easier to gobble you up. But and we, if, and we might get more predators. If we have lots of quizzles, the population of predators might go up. Yes. But if Xn is very small, <coughs> then all of a sudden one minus, so one minus Xn will be close to one. And so that will hardly, um, that, that won't have, it, that won't impede the growth of the quizzel population. So there'll be- um, Lots of space. And more space, yeah. more food. Um, Yeah, so this is the um, model that we're going to use now. And we'll start with a, um, we'll start with, um, we'll start with taking <coughs> K equals two. 
So we'll uh, have a look at an example. So if we take k equals two, and we'll start with initial population of x naught equals 0.5. Okay, Charlie, can you tell me what x1 is going to be? Um, so if x0 is 0 0.5, 1 minus x0 is also 0 0.5. <clears throat> so I've got to multiply 2 by a half by a half which is going to give me a half. Okay, so can you predict what x2 is going to be? Well, I'll have to carry out exactly the same operation. So it looks like we've got a, we're in a stage of, a state of equilibrium where we keep a population, a very contented population, I imagine. Um, I, I, I think of it as, getting onto a bus or getting onto a train where half the seats are taken up, but half the seats are empty. So you can sit next to, yeah, the, the, the space. Um, so, um, and, and there is a uh, companionship, but you're not crowded. Uh, that seems, that seems very nice. So we can still, <clears throat> with, with this new um, model, we can still have behaviors where the population is stable and stays the same throughout time. Uh, let's take um, another example. So if x naught equals 0.3. Okay, Charlie, can you work out what x1 would be? Okay, so I'm going to work in fractions here. So okay. xn is 3 tenths. So 1 minus um, xn is going to be 7 tenths. Yep. And I've got to multiply this by 2. <clears throat> so I'm going to get 6, 7, 42 seventieths. Uh, Oh, wait a minute. I think... No, no, no. It, 42 hundredths. So I'm going to get 0 0.42. Okay, brilliant. 0 0.42. Okay, I, I won't ask you to do any more of those. Um, let's get the calculator and have a look and see what's happening here. So I'm going to try and... Um, yeah, please don't put spoilers in the um, chat for a minute. I'm going to ask you to do something for yourself in a second. So I'm going to start with 0.3. I'm trying to show you how to use the... Um, calculator efficiently, you should have an answer button on your calculator. So I want to do two times my previous population. So if I click answer, it will just take my previous answer times one minus answer. Oops. Okay, so what I've got there looks exactly like this thing up here, apart from instead of the XN, I've got the answer. So I do it once, I get 0 0.42, like Charlie said. Then I get 0 0.4872, and I keep going. And as somebody said in the chat, I end up at the stable population of 0 0.5. Okay, this is your turn now. So if you've got so a can calculator... I just check, Claire? Go on. Okay, so in the original example, we started at a half and we just carried on at a half. Yeah. But what's surprising is that even if we don't start at a half, we ended up at a half. Yeah, so, so if we had if, x naught equals 0 0.3, we end up at, uh, let's put x infinity for where we end up at, as 0 0.5. So were you going to ask whether you always end up at a half? Yeah. I mean, right. I don't think it's obvious that we're always going to end up at half. No. So what I'd like you to do, um, if you've got a calculator with you, that's absolutely brilliant. If mm -hmm. not, you can find a calculator online. Um, pick an initial population. So, for example, you could pick 0.7. Um, you could pick 0.01. Pick an initial population and see what happens as time goes on. And then once you've done that, in the chat, write out your initial population. You can write A equals, if you like. And you can write infinity equals 0.5. Oh, sorry, that was our example, wasn't it? So have a go at value and then put it into your chat. So we want your initial value and your final value, what happens in the end. And I'll give you about a minute to do that.
Okay, you might want to try and find some really small values and some really big values. <clears throat> I like that we've got some interesting values that people are trying. They're not just going for 0 0.7 or 0 0.6. If anyone's trying a couple of different values, what happens, or like E over 10 is an initial value. That's a nice one. Okay, so I, I think it looks, oh, somebody else got one. I think it looks like almost everybody's values, or someone's tried a really tiny one. It looks like almost everybody's values are going to end up at 0 0.5. Okay. Um, one of the things, <laughs> pi over 100. <laughs> one of the things um, that we've done is because trying to use a calculator takes a bit of time. We've actually created a GeoGebra page for you. So um, if I try and show you what it looks like. Oops. Claire, can I ask a question yep. about what we've just done? Can we go back to the algebraic expression? Yep. Could I have done some algebra to show to, that this is what was gonna happen, that it was gonna oh. end up at X equals a half? Because there, presumably, yeah. if it tends to somewhere, then xn plus one is going to be the same as xn, and I can write an equation just with x's. So if we say x infinity equals just x, yes. then I could write x equals 2x, 1 minus x. Yes, and so then to find what the value of x is that satisfies mm -hmm. this equation, So what could I do to this side? I could expand okay, so I could this do side. 2x yeah. minus x squared. I think I'm going to say 2x squared. Minus, yes. And then that could give me 2x squared equals x. I could mm -hmm. divide both sides by x and I get Well, you can divide, oh, no, you can only divide both sides by x if you say that x is not equal to zero. Okay. And actually, if you put in x equals zero, you'll always get zero. So if you have no quizzles at all, yes. you're never going to get any quizzles. Yes. Yeah. And this is uh, what's called a, a stable point of our iteration. If you stick in 0 0.5, you stay on 0 0.5. OK. So let's have um, a quick look at this Jojo page. I'm going to put the uh, link in the chat just need to get my mouse what you might find is when you're using this you might have to change the size of uh, the screen so just by using the mouse you can scroll in and out and that will change the size of the screen you can move it about um, you can also move these things about if you need to so you might have to move some things about and we were on k equals two which is about that ah, there you go k equals two so we tried some different values of a and the first value of a we tried was 0 0.5 and you can see here it always stays that the population always stays at a proportion of 0 0.5 uh, some people tried really really big values and what you probably found is for a really big value it dropped to very very low and then gradually came back up to 0 0.5 and for the very small values we start very low and then we gradually go up to get to 0 0.5. Um, but you can also see that when you start on naught, you stay on naught. And actually, if you start on one, the next year you get naught and you end up, you stay on naught. So- and You could tell that that's gonna happen from the equation, can't you? Yeah. Because if Xn is zero, you're gonna be multiplying by zero. If Xn is one, one minus Xn is also gonna be zero. Yeah, so our equation is k xn <coughs> 1 minus xn. If xn equals 0, we're going to be multiplying by 0. If xn equals 1, 1 minus xn equals 0. 
So we're going to be multiplying by zero. So for the rest of the webinar, I would like you to, if you can, use this um, GeoGebra page to investigate what's going to happen. So there's a link in the chat. So if you've got a spare um, tab, you can stick that link to the tab and then have a play. Okay. So we've looked at the case when k equals two. I think we've done all that actually. The, there's a couple of questions I'd like you to think about when we're using the GeoGebra page. And the questions I want you to think about are, can you find a, what we call a parameter or k value where the population always dies out. So when k equals two, the population always end up at 0.5. Can you find one where whatever you do for your initial A, the, the population always goes extinct? The second question is, can you find a parameter so that population settles down to a constant value, but it's not 0.5? So for example, can you find a k value where the population um, settles down to about 0.4. The third question is, can you find a K value so that the population doesn't settle down, but ends up pinging back and forth between two values? Or perhaps you can find one where it pings between three values or four values. And the very last question, which is quite hard, um, I'm gonna say, gonna say what, what I want you to do if you answer in a second. The last question, which is really quite hard, is why in our GeoGebra page have we picked limits of naught and four for the K-slider? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn chat off for two minutes, have a quick play with those value, with those questions, and then after two minutes, I'm going to put chat back on again, and I'd like you to type your answers into the chat. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to have a play with the GeoGebra page, and then we will talk about some of the um, things you might have found out. If you want to keep using the calculator, that's absolutely fine as well. Uh, the judge of a page is just a bit easier because you can just slide K and A up and down. It always feels like two minutes is a very, very long time. I'll give you another 30 seconds and then I'll open the chat back up. Okay, I've opened the chat back up. What I suggest you do is perhaps when you're writing your answers, say something like one K equals and put in your value so that I know which question you're talking about. So we'll start with question one, actually. Um, did anyone get a, a K value where the population died out? It's got 0 0.5, 0 0.2, uh, naught, yes, uh, 0.44. K less than 0 0.5, 0 0.42. Has anyone got a slightly bigger value of K for question one? 0 0.8. Oh, K, 0 0.99999. Okay, so we've got quite a few possible values for K there. Okay, um, for question two, can you give me your k value and also what the 
infinity, what the population settled down to. So for question two, can you give me your K value and infinity? So for example, you could have two and infinity was a half. Okay, we've got K equals 2.5. I think that probably settles down to 0 0.6 rather than six. Because, okay, we've got K equals 1.26. Yep. And that settles down to about 0.4-ish. Um, K equals 1.8, and that settles down to uh, four ninths. Uh, K equals 1.5, that settles down to a third. We'll look at that one in a second. Has anyone got any other answers to question two? So it looks like for my first question, all of my answers are less than one. And for the second question, I've got answers which are, I've got some which is sort of 1.5-ish. I've got two, uh, some suggested a 2.25. Um, we've got a 1.665. So those answers all seem to start with either a one or a two. Okay, let's ask about question three. Has anyone found a parameter where you end up oscillating between values? Three point not four. It's been suggested. Three point two. Now somebody's been looking at my slides. I was going to do 3.2, uh, 3.26, uh, 3.14, I wonder why that was picked, 3.28, 3.16, 3.5. Okay, so it looks like most of those actually start when, uh, when K equals three. I'm not gonna address question four at the moment, I'm gonna leave that. 3.78, ooh, that's an interesting one. Does that oscillate through two values or four values? Okay. Claire, so we call it, yeah, go Charlie. It, it's not clear whether if K is just a little bit more than one, mm -hmm. whether it's going to die out or not. Is that because the graph stops at 30 years? It's Let's have a look at the um, JoJoBra file. And Thank see, you. See. I mean, I'm just thinking if you have something like 1.05 or even 1.1. Okay, so um, what I can do if I want to is I can actually set K to be a particular value. So uh, what did you want for K? 1.01. Would that be a good value to pick? That would be a great value to pick. I, because there seemed to be an assumption that if it was smaller than one, it was going to mm. die out, but not otherwise. Yeah, and this is really hard to tell, isn't it? To see whether or not it, it's going to um, die out. So it, it sort of looks like it's um, not actually meeting the x-axis, but we're not entirely sure. I wonder if we can actually work out whether that's going to... Um, be a stable population. So Charlie, I'm going to pick your trick from before. So we've got this as a, an equation. And if we have a stable population, then we know that when we put in a value X, we get the same X back again. So I think this is the equation um, for my stable population in the limit. Yes, once it stops changing. Yeah, so let's um, just expand. So I get x, and here I get kx times one and kx times x. So I think this is my equation. Yes. Um, I'm going to write kx squared on this side, so it's positive. And this side is going to be k minus one times x. Oops. Okay. But we're assuming that k is bigger than one at the moment, so this is going to be positive. Um, we're going to get either x equals zero or kx equals k minus one times x, uh, 
no x, I've divided by x. So it looks like my stable population is going to be this. Okay, so let's try it with this value of k. And k equals 1.01, you get k minus 1 over k is 0.01 over 1.01. So the population should eventually stabilize at about 0.01. Um, somebody suggested in the chat uh, 1.5, and I think in the chat they said that that went to a third. So if we try k equals 1.5 in this, we get 1.5 oops, minus 1 over 1.5. So k minus 1 over k. That is 0 0.5 over 1.5. If I multiply top and bottom by 2, I get 1 over 3. Um, I'm just going to scroll back through the chat for a second, so please nobody write anything, because otherwise I'm going to lose them. Um, somebody said when k equals 1.26, they thought that that settled down at about 0.4. If I take k equals, I'm going to take k equals 1.25, because um, that feels friendlier to me. And I'm just going to create some space. You mean the arithmetic is going to be easier for you? The arithmetic is going to be easier for me, yes. So if I take k equals 1.25, I get 1.25 minus 1 over 1.25, which is 0.25 over 1.25. And I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 4. That gives me 0.25 times 4 is 1. 1 1.25 times 4 is 5, I think. So I think when k equals 1.25, that looks like it's going to 10 to 1 fifth, which is 0 0.2. So let's just try that. Just ignore the fact that I've got bits of um, working everywhere. I'm going to just try changing my k to be 1.25. I might have to do it by the settings if I can't get this quite accurately enough. Well, except that it's sufficiently close to see that yeah. you're going towards 0 0.2. Okay, so 1.26, that does look like it's going ended up at about 0 0.2. Okay, so we seem to have some sort of um, way of explaining what the final population will be, but things seem to be going a bit weird when we were looking at bigger numbers. So um, somebody suggested 3.2 as one where it's going to oscillate. So let's go to 3.2 and we'll check that out. So 3.2 is here. And yes, I, I think I agree that that oscillates. That, that does look like it's settling down. Using our um, x equals k minus 1 over k, when k equals 3.2, we get 3.2 minus 1 over 3.2, which is 2.2 over 3.2, um, which is, I don't know if it's going to be nice, this is 22 over 32. This is a little bit of uh, maths. Okay, 11 sixteenths, I think that is. But we're not settling down to 11 sixteenths. We're pinging back and forth. So I'm going to just look at a different GeoGebra page and try and work out a bit more what's happening. Sorry, Claire. Yeah. Can you just go through that again? We're getting 11 16s, but we don't, that, this doesn't guarantee that it's going to no. settle gonna, on 11 16s. I'm going to see if I can actually start on 11 16s and see what happens. So this is my A. Um, I wonder if this will let me do this. If not, I might have to use a calculator. Oh, no, that's fine. Ah. So if we start on 11 16s exactly, we stay on 11 sixteenths. But if we change this slightly, we're starting to get that oscillation behavior. So I've got um, a file here where yeah. I've got three values. So if I go back to 3.2, and if I make this one. Is this three different starting sixteens. values, Claire? These are three different starting values. So I can take values which are very close to 11 sixteenths 
Uh, let's make this 0 0.7. But it's only this red one in the middle that starts on 11 sixteenths exactly where you stay at 11 sixteenths and the other two end up oscillating, which is kind of weird. Right, Charlie, I think we've got a bit off piece now, so I'm trying to remember what um, we should look Sorry, at Sorry, is that next. my fault? No, no, that's absolutely fine. It, it, I, I was looking at your equation there in the top mm. left-hand corner, the k, uh, x equals k minus one over k. And of course, if, if k is equal to one, yep. then x is gonna be zero. So it's not surprising that everything, when, when k was less than one, we ended up um, with uh, the population dying out. But when but, K is a bit bigger than one, we're always gonna have positive values. Whenever, yeah. we, we won't end up with. So, so that convinces me also that um, K equals one was the, the a limit there for the answer for your first question. Uh, the other way we can look at it is if K is less than one, um, Xn has to be less than one, unless we're yeah. starting with the maximum number, and this has to be less than one. So each time we're multiplying Xn by two things which are less than one, it's going to keep decreasing. Yes. Okay. Um, we looked, I asked you for a, another couple of um, values. I asked you for things where they wrote, um, cycle through four values. Um, I'll try and show you an example of that. Um, I just need to clear the drawings. Okay. So uh, one possible place where you, we converge around four values, I think is about naught point uh, is about three point five. Try and get that about right. There we go. So I'm just going to move that a bit so it's a bit easier to see. So what we've actually got here are four different values. We've got this value. We've got this value. We've got this value and this value. So after a bit, it settles down into a cycle over those four values. And actually, if I change K just slightly more, it's a little bit more uh, obvious. So I'm gonna change it to 3.55. Okay, so now you can see uh, a bit more that this bottom value is on about 0.356. This top value is at about 0.88, say. And we're sort of cycling through these four values. Now, this sort of behavior has been observed in um, real life. So if I ask you in the chat, which I hope is still open, in the chat, can you name an animal which throws itself off a cliff? Oh, penguins. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you might not know, but um, we, we've got three people so far that have said lemmings. So it is a, an urban myth that lemmings throw themselves off cliffs. What's actually happened is that, that their population follows this pattern. It gets really high one year and then it drops down. And it happens about once every four years. The population gets really big, and then it crashes. Now, in about the 1950s, 1960s, um, people were trying to explain this, and they didn't have this maths. And they're trying to work out why the population of lemmings uh, plummeted every four years. And they came up with the theory that the lemmings were throwing themselves off, off a cliff. And there was actually a documentary made in about the 1950s, 1960s, where they filmed the lemmings jumping off a cliff. But I'm afraid to say the only reason that those lemmings were jumping off the cliff was that the camera crew were chasing them. Um, so they were so desperate to prove this theory, they actually drove the lemmings off the cliff themselves, which is rather horrible. Now we understand a bit more about the maths. And this is what's happening with lemmings. Um, at the end, I'm going to share a link with you where you can find a bit more information about that and you can actually see a clip 
of these lemmings jumping off the cliff. So as we, as we sort of, um, as the case increased, we've now got this really weird behavior where the um, population is cycling through four different values. Um, you can, if you work out the value of K um, using the K minus one over K, you can find a perfectly stable population which will stay stable. Um, I won't work that out now, but you might like to try that for yourselves. Okay, so here's the next question. What happens if K gets even bigger? So we started with um, sort of small values of K where it died out. Uh, we got bigger where we ended up going into this sort of stable um, state. And then we started getting to the point where we started to wobble. So the question is, what starts to happen as K gets even bigger? Um, so what I'd like you to do, I'm going to give you one more thing to do in the chat. How am I doing? I've got 15 minutes. I've got one more thing I'd like you to do in the chat. And I would like you to pick, um, I'd like you to take K equals 3.7. And I'd like you to take a starting point between uh, 0.8 and 0.6. So K equals 3.7 between 0.8 and 0.6. And then in the chat, can you tell me where you end up after 30 years? So you could just write those few values. Um, so I'll do it myself as well. Oops. So I'm going to take K equals 3.7. And I'm going to take a value of A. I'm going to take that value of A. So I ended up at 0.797-ish. So in the chat, can you write out where you end up after 30 years? You can just do the first three values if you like. So we've got, um, oops, that's one thing. We've got two answers so far. So we've got a 0 0.703, we've got a 0 0.55, 0 0.435, uh, 0.66, 0.521, 0.711, uh, 0. Oh, that's really big. 0 0.9189, 0 0.278, 0 um, did a few more, 706. Okay, so we've got lots and lots of different answers. So what I'm going to ask you is I'm going to ask you to do something slightly different now. Well, actually, very, very similar. But it might be that the reason that you've all got different answers is we had wildly different estimates on our initial population. So I want you to keep K equals 3.7, but this time I want you to take your starting value and let's assume that we're really quite certain, perhaps we've gone and counted all these quizzles, but we're really quite certain, we might have missed one, but we think our population is between 0 0.701 and 0 0.699. So can you try it again, k equals 3.7, an initial value between these two points, and then tell me what your population is after 30 years. So I will do that as well. Okay, so I've done that already, 0 0.2615. So any value between there. Uh, what might actually be useful, because it's actually quite hard to do this, I'm going to share this file with you, um, apart from the fact I've got my annotation button in the way. This file will allow you to actually input a value. So 0.6999. Okay, so we've got a 0 0.927, 0 0.634, 0 0.58, 0.645. Seven. We had a 0 0.9 something. I've got 0 0.635, 0 0.633, which is uh, 0 0.519, 0 0.634. So even though the starting populations of everybody's are really close to each other, the final population. I mean, 
it may look like there's not much difference between 0.5 and 0.9, but actually we're talking about the proportion of the total possible population. So it could be about a quarter of the total population. It could be about 90%. This is an enormous difference. Yep. So the, the, the question here is, is what's, what's happening here? So I think we've got uh, the smallest one I've seen so far is about a quarter, and the biggest is about 90%. So obviously something quite weird is going on. So I've got one more page to share with you, um, which is this one. And on this page, we can see what happens for three different populations. So if I take my K back to, uh, well, sorry. I'm going to have to set this using the settings app because I can't quite get my, no, wrong one. I can't quite uh, get it accurately enough. There we go. So even if we start with things which are really, really close, 0 0.7, 0 0.701, we can see for the first few years, everything is doing more or less the same thing. And then by about year eight, the populations start to act wildly differently. And this is something um, which is known as chaos. So it also reminds me about weather, mm. where you can predict the weather for the next couple of days based and then on it gets today's very, weather. Yeah. And then it starts getting uh, the variation increases between it's the something... predicted and the, and the actual one. It's sometimes called the butterfly effect. So the weather, as Charlie said, is really hard to um, predict a long way into the future. And there was a, a quote, when, when chaos first started to be studied in maths, uh, there's a quote from Lorenz, I think it was, which was that a butterfly on one side of the world flapping its wings can cause a hurricane on the other side of the world. And it's the idea that these, this equation is very, very sensitive to the initial conditions. And if you just tweak the initial conditions very, very slightly, you get wildly different results uh, a long way down the line. Um, so that's only for certain values of K. If my K gets lower, uh, we get to the point where everything basically behaves the same. And even if my initial populations are a bit out, oh, that's the same, that doesn't help. Even if my initial populations vary, the behavior still behave is still the same as you carry on. But when we get past about 3.5-ish, we start to end up with this very, very different behavior. Now, chaos is a, is a really interesting um, uh, part of maths. Um, something else that, um, I, I can't remember who it was who, who proved it, but somebody proved that if you have an equation like this and you get some behavior where you end up cycling through three values, then that means you can have a cycle that goes through any number of values you like, and you will also get chaos. So somebody proved if you can have a cycle through three values, you can get a cycle through any number you like, you could have uh, a million and two values and cycle through those, and you'll also get chaos. And just before we finish, I'm going to show you, uh, one of those which I have, there we go. No, that's not it, that's a weird one. Ah, there we go. So this is a value that actually, a K value where you actually cycle through three values. We've got this value at the top, we've got this value at the bottom, and then we have this sort of value halfway through. There's a bit of a kink there, it's really hard to see, but that is actually going through three values again and again. And because we've got this three value behavior, we'll also get any number of um, values and we'll also get chaos. Okay, um, I've talked a little bit about the uh, page, um, which- Claire, yeah, sorry. before yeah. you go on, 
you did ask a question about why we thought K didn't go Ooh, beyond yes. four. And I've been doing a little bit of thinking about this mm -hmm. while you've been. And um, could you write your the equation that we had um, where xn plus one equals k xn times? Oops. Sorry, I was trying to get to a clear page. No, I scrolled too far. Yeah, that, that's equation. Right. Well, it seems to me that if k was five, for example, mm -hmm. and let's imagine that we had an initial population of a third. <clears throat> yep. I think we're going to get into some trouble here because we're going to have five times one third times two thirds. And we're going to end up Ooh, with yes. 10 ninths, which is more than one. Now we can't have a population greater mm -hmm. than one. So that's going to be problematic. And it seems to be that if K is four, Xn mm -hmm. times one minus Xn, if we want to maximize that, we're going to have Xn equal to half. Yeah. And so then we would get four times a half times a half, which is exactly one. But as soon as we have a K greater than four, there's the possibility that we're going to end up with an Xn plus one, which is greater than 100%. So the whole thing is going to fold is that your answer to why? It is. We're going to leave the range. So I think I can um, show you this because on, on this, this one that I've got here, I can actually input a value of K. So um, you said K equals five causes problems. And um, yes. So you can see when K equals five, we've gone, first of all, we went to a population of 1.2-ish, and then we've gone to a very, very negative population. Which is a bit um, bit dodgy, and if we put in k something negative, again, oh, I mean that's that's quite nice behaviour, but we do keep ending up with a negative number of quizzles, which is not great in terms of quizzles. Okay, but there's lots more that you can do um, with the logistic map. Oh, sorry, I, I've just given it its name. This equation that we've been looking at is called the logistic map. Um, and there's lots and lots of uh, maths that can be done with it, which we, we haven't covered today. Um, I'm trying to find my annotation button again. Logistic map is the name of it. And we've put together some uh, things for you to look at. Um, if you want to do some more further reading about this, um, there's also some videos. Uh, like I said, there's the video of um, the poor lemmings <laughs> been uh, driven off the cliff. Uh, so I'm just going to put a link in the chat to where you can find some of these. I've also got um, some background reading, which I haven't actually, oh, Charlie's just done it for me. I've also got some background reading that you can have a look at as well. Um, so we've got lots of stuff there for you to look at. Uh, there's also a couple of books you might like to read. Um, we've almost out of time. So I'm going to also share our feedback form. I'll put a link in the chat there as well. So this is our feedback form. So if you have any feedback on today, anything you'd like to say went well, we'd really like to hear it. Anything that didn't go well, we'd also really like to hear that as well. Um, so that we know how we can improve things for you uh, in future events. Um, so uh, that's everything that um, we're going to cover today. Um, thank you very much for coming. I'm going to just, uh, share back to the nice picture of the guinea pigs because they, they are quite cute um, and I'll just see if there's anything in the Q&A um, right we've had one person who's said in Q&A uh, would I send a link to the recording of this webinar um, Charlie we're going to put that onto the Enrich page aren't we at some point yes yeah so uh, I think the... that's Gabriel I think I know Gabriel I think he's ah. a I think he's a, a teacher in Argentina. <laughs> okay, uh, yes, Gabriel, there will be a link on the page that um, I've just put down again. Um, 
and also on that page you'll find links to all of the GeoGebra files so if you want to go away and have a play with it yourself and try and find some of this weird behavior um, there's also a link to something called a cobweb diagram which we didn't have time to talk about today but you can also investigate that um, so besides that thank you very much for coming Claire yep. I, I just wonder whether we should show them the, the Cambridge Festival page, page. just good idea yeah th because you've talked about it and just um, so that everybody can see, I still see your writing logistic yeah. map on my I'm screen. I'm going to remove that in a second. And Gabriel has confirmed in the question and answer page that it is him. Yeah. So there is a wonderful problem on the Enriched website called Gabriel's problem. And that was suggested to me by Gabriel who uh, posted a question. Okay, so the link that I put in the chat is to this page that Claire is showing you. And we've done some other sessions at the Cambridge Festival for younger students, but Claire has uploaded. Do you want to just talk through what? Yep, so um, here are links to some of the different um, file, JoJo files, which you can play with. Um, I've put it here as a summary. I hadn't actually linked that yet. I will do that later on this evening. Um, and that's just a, a sort of summary of the ideas. It also talks a little bit about the um, cobweb diagram, which we didn't talk about today. Um, so there's a bit of further reading there as well. Um, down here, the Royal Institution, Institution Christmas Lecture is the one which has lemmings in it. Um, I've tried to tell you about when the lemmings appear. They also bring out some little lemmings. They're very cute. Um, and then there's a, a number file video, which is very good, and a couple other things that might be useful. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all we'd like to do today. Uh, please do fill out our uh, feedback form and let us know what we did well and what we could do better. And thank you very much for coming. Thank you, everybody.